Hi, I'm Erika Parente from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and I'm going to present you the poster that it's about the CLT2 inhibitor's effect on a fatty liver disease in patients with lipid dystrophy. Uh, this is a very rare disease. Uh, the prevalence is 1 in 12 million people. So it's a, just a series of cases of two cases that we have. And this patient, they have almost totally absence of adipose tissue. That's why they develop a very severe diabetes, hypertriglyceridemia, and also very high insulin resistance. So nowadays, what we have the best to treat these patients is metroleptin, but it's not available in Brazil. So we treat them with insulin and they need a very high dose of insulin. So we try to treat them better, trying to associate the STLT2 inhibitor to insulin and look what it happens with the glucose control, hyperinsulinemia, and also about the fat liver disease. So these are the four patients. They look like acromegaly patients because of the insulin resistant, very high insulin levels. As you can see, they have very low leptin levels because they do not have almost any adipose tissue. So, um, and over there, we can see the evaluation about the liver with kilopascals evaluating the fibrosis, considering the 6.0 above this is a fibrosis, and the um, control attenuation parameter is to evaluate the fat in the liver, consider the 200 above this value uh, steatosis. What we could see is the two patients, the two oldest one, with uh, 59 and 61 year old, they had fibrosis. The two youngest, they didn't. Probably because of the time of exposure in the fat and the liver and inflammation. And what we could see uh, in the, our analysis of the liver, we use the elastography with fiber scan. And what we could see is just the two oldest patients improved the fibrosis. The other two, they didn't have fibrosis. And it was not related with the fat and the liver because some just increase and decrease. It was not a regular parameter in the fat in the liver. And we could not correlate the improvement in fibrosis with the improvement in A1C or in insulin doses. And neither in the weight. They didn't change so much the weight. So these patients, they eat a lot because of the absence of leptin. So uh, we couldn't see a great improvement in glucose control, hyperinsulinemia, or body weight. But the two patients that had fibrosis, we could see an improvement even after six months and better at, after 12 months. So we do not know exactly why this happened in the liver, but considering the other presentations, and there is a paper in mice that's showing that Caniglifosin, that mice uh, MC4 receptor knockout, and uh, they had a very great improvement after caniglifosin in steatosis, fibrosis, and apatocarcinoma. And they suppose maybe in suppression of fibrogenic genes, or maybe a direct anti-inflammatory effect that we do not do not know uh, for now. So this is our results. It's a retrospective analysis of treating patients in clinical uh, scenario. So uh, it's just four patients because it's very rare. So maybe we need more patients with this rare disease to evaluate what can explain this result. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are we open for questions? Yes.